React 19 is a nonprofit started by Brienne Dressen to fill the gaps. It helps the vaccine injured find each other, raises funds for expensive treatment, and presses the authorities to help. In 12 short months, we amassed over 21,000 COVID vaccine injured here just in the United States. Uh, between our partnerships globally, the amount to close to two dozen different countries, uh, we're sitting at about 40 to 50,000 COVID vaccine injured globally. A preschool teacher and mom, she herself suffered a severe neurological reaction to the AstraZeneca shot after eagerly joining the U.S. trials. So I spent the next several months uh, with my condition continuing to decline, fighting for my life, my husband calling repeatedly out to the drug company, asking for help, begging for help, and our cries for help went unanswered. Finally, she got lucky. The National Institutes of Health, or NIH, flew her out to join a small-scale study with 22 other vaccine injured, and it changed everything. They know how to treat this. How do they treat it? What they've told me and others is that, um, that early intervention is key and that immunotherapy, when it comes to an immune-mediated disease like uh, a vaccine reaction, um, that the most important thing you can do is calm down the immune system and stop the attack in your body. So they know what's happening. They know how to treat it. They know early intervention is the key, and yet none of that's being acknowledged and developed into some sort of program to help people who are affected. Correct. And it's not like this, it's not like they kind of know. I mean, they flew us out. We were there in person. We were in the state-of-the-art facilities. They did all of the top-of-the-line testing. They know at a very intimate level what's going on with this. They know about microclotting. They know about the nervous system breakdown. They know about small fiber neuropathy. They know about the cognitive issues. They know all of it. And so it kind of astonishes me that I was able to get that golden ticket to go to the NIH to be evaluated and for them to literally change the trajectory of my recovery when tens of thousands of Americans across this country were not afforded the same treatment, the same luxury, I guess you could call it at this point, since they haven't given that very essential and matter of fact treatment to all of the other Americans who stepped up and got their shot. Knowing that help exists, Dressen continued reaching out to the health authorities to get help for others. So Peter Marks, he's the head of biologics at the FDA. Um, we've had seven, eight meetings with him at this point. We have 300 plus emails um, back and forth with him and his team. And they keep saying that they can't possibly find these safety signals. They can't possibly find them. All new drugs are monitored for potential problems. Safety signals aren't proof of a problem, but they're meant to act as red flags, telling health officials there's something to investigate. For us to make some kind of a statement publicly, we'd have to have, we'd have to find the data in our database. We do look for major neurologic issues. The question for us is understanding what is um, related to vaccines and, and what uh, it is not, because sometimes that's a very challenging thing to sort out. You know, we have not, there, there's not a clear signal um, uh, for the specific kinds of neurologic events that, that you have uh, been reporting, but that, that, that's not saying that it doesn't exist. It just says that we don't have a signal. So I remember back when the press releases started with myocarditis with the six cases, there was a press release that said, hey, heads up, we think that there's a signal. We're looking into it. So I'm trying to figure out why um, with all of the cases and all of the data and how tightly correlated even with the timeline, why we're not seeing the same press release or communication be released about a potential post-vax syndrome. We struggle very uh, diligently and uh, to try to understand uh, safety signals and to make use of them. Well, Zach Stieber with, um, with Epoch Times, he was able to get a foyer. In this foyer, the CDC did a full evaluation of the various signals and they found over 700 safety signals in 
in VAERS. The government found over 700 safety signals, 500 of which were stronger signals than myocarditis. A month into the public rollout is when we have confirmation that the heads of the NIH, the head of the FDA, have known about the COVID vaccine injured. Um, we have emails with injured individuals with the heads of these agencies as early as February and March of 2021. Um, and they're acknowledging that they're getting repeated reports of neurological injuries specifically to these agencies. And they were asking us to not publicize this and not go to the press while they figured out what was going on and they promised us that they would disclose this to the public. Have they done that? They have not. We've had three suicides in the last three weeks. And it's the beginning of winter, so it's gonna get worse. So we're, we're trying to give these people some hope. I sent you guys a suicide letter like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and I didn't get a response back. The man, he's gone. Theirs wasn't the only alert system throwing up safety signals that should have been investigated. In fact, there were several. And what they have in common is that US health authorities wanted to keep the data hidden from the public. 